Hello and welcome to another video lesson. This one is about the rise of Christianity. At times this might seem like Bible class or Sunday school or even church uh, if you're a Christian, but uh, that's okay. Last year you learned about Hinduism and Buddhism. You learned about Judaism. This year we're gonna learn about Christianity and later Islam. Um, but right now we're gonna focus on Christianity because we're studying the Roman Empire. So let's look at our notes. We got the rise of Christianity. Christianity, how does it start? Well, according to Christians, it all begins with a man born in the Roman province of Judea in a little town called Bethlehem, and his name was Jesus, and Christians believe he was the Son of God. He was born in the year 4 BC. Now you might say, wait a minute, I thought 1 AD was when Jesus was born. After all, AD, Anno Domini in Latin, means in the year of the Lord, right? 1 AD. Historians believe he was actually born at four years earlier in 4 BC. You see, because in the, the calendar we're on, it's called the Gregorian calendar, written by Gregorian monks back in the year 365. Prior to 365, they were on the Roman calendar, and the Roman calendar began, year one began with the founding of Rome with Romulus and Remus. But by 365, the Catholic Church believed we should have a calendar based not on the founding of Rome, but on the birth of Jesus. So they did their mathematical calculations and they believed that they had figured out the year Jesus was born, but they were four years off. That means that if it's 2020 right now, it's actually year 2024. So we're actually in the year 2024, not the year 2020, if they were four years off, as historians believe. So moving on, he grew up in Nazareth. That's why he's referred to Jesus of Nazareth. He was a carpenter. By the time Jesus became a young adult, he began to preach, preach what he believed. And his followers just viewed him as a rabbi because he and his followers were Jewish. Right? Jesus was Jewish. If you were to take the Christian faith and just break it down into one phrase, that would be, love one another as God loves us. Jesus said this on the Sermon on the Mount, his most famous speech, probably one of the most famous speeches ever given, with the exception of Lincoln's Gettysburg Address. But on the Sermon on the Mount, he's on the mountaintop and the multitudes amassed to listen to him and there wasn't enough food. So according to Christian belief, he took whatever fish was there and loaves of bread and he worked a miracle and there was enough bread and fish for everyone to eat. But during this speech, he tells them, love one another as God loves us. After a few years of traveling the roads from town to town and preaching, Jesus had 12 really close followers. They he called them his disciples, or they're also referred to as apostles. And as the apostles and Jesus traveled around and they preached, they really grew quite a following, and to the point where basically the Roman authorities, the Roman leadership in the province of Judea, saw Jesus as a threat. One of Jesus' followers, Judas, turned Jesus into the Roman authorities. To this day, Judas means traitor. Don't be a Judas, don't be a traitor. Judas turned him in for a bag of gold. Judas ultimately felt so sorry for what he did, he hung himself from a tree. But uh, so the Roman authorities captured Jesus, they crucified him, so he became a martyr. He died for his faith, that's what being a martyr is. Crucified means nail to a cross, a nail through the hand, through the hand, one right through the feet, and you basically hang from the cross until you either bleed to death or suffocate because the way you're positioned on this cross in order to breathe because the gra your gravity is pushing against your your chest cavity against the cross in order to breathe you have to push down on the nail through your feet to lift from the cross to <gasps> take a breath <sighs> and then you collapse against the cross again and then you push down on that nail through your feet to lift from the cross and breathe again and ultimately you just get so tired you can't pull from the cross to breathe anymore and you just suffocate to death. So Jesus dies through crucifixion, a very brutal way to die. Thousands and thousands were crucified during the days of the Roman Empire. But it's funny, people only remember the one. 
because Jesus' teachings are ultimately going to change the world. Christians believe that after three days, Jesus rose from the dead and continued to preach for 40 days. 40 is a significant number in the Bible, like Noah in his ark was lost at sea for 40 days looking for dry land. Jesus was fasting in the desert for 40 days. Moses was lost in the wilderness for 40 years trying to find his, with the Ten Commandments, trying to find a, a place for his people. So 40 represents God testing humans in the Bible. So Jesus preached for 40 days and then Christians believe that he ascended into heaven body and soul. But before Jesus ascended into heaven, he pulled aside his top disciple, Peter, and he said, when I am gone, you shall be the rock upon where my church will be built. So when Jesus was gone, Peter became the first bishop of Rome. Today we call the first bishop of Rome the Pope. Pope is Latin for Father. So Peter, Jesus' disciple, was the first Pope of the Catholic Church. Early Christians were heavily persecuted by the Roman authorities, especially under Emperor Nero. There was a great fire in Rome that burned down most of the city, and he was afraid that the people were going to turn on him. So he needed a scapegoat, someone to blame, so the Romans would become enraged at them for burning the city town, and he blamed the Christians. And that's when the Roman authorities really started cracking down on Christians. They sent out spies, they sent out Christian hunters to figure out where the, these Christians were hiding, where they were having their church services. They were rounding them up. They were forcing them to convert to the Roman faith. So if you were an early Christian and you were captured by the Roman authorities and you wanted to live, there is a procedure, a process that you had to undergo in order to renounce your faith, get rid of your Christian faith and become a Roman again. So this procedure entailed drawing a circle in the sand, taking a cross, the symbol of the Christian faith, and turning the cross upside down, placing it in the circle, grabbing the crossbars, and breaking it, and saying, I renounce my faith, I give up my faith. And that is where the peace symbol comes from. If you look at the peace symbol, it's a circle with an upside down broken cross. Why is it called the peace symbol? Because Emperor Nero said that world peace can only be found by eliminating Christians. The peace symbol means peace by eliminating Christians. So why is it simply called the peace symbol today and not seen as a Christian hate symbol? Because during the 1960s, there was this youth movement that was protesting against the war in Vietnam and blaming America for the war and blaming Western civilization for bringing about all the problems in the world. So what epitomizes Western civilization more than the Christian faith. So they took this Christian hate symbol and started slapping it on their signs during the protests. And so now to this day, people just think it means peace, but ultimately, originally, it meant a Christian hate symbol. Under Emperor Nero, they had Christians that didn't renounce their faith thrown to the lions. I mean, crucifixion is a horrific way to go, but imagine being torn apart by a man-eating lion. I mean, I can't think of a worse way to go. Emperor Nero also sent out these Christian hunters to root out where these Christians are hiding and persecute them. One in particular, his name was Paul. So according to the New Testament, there was a Christian hunter by the name of Paul, and he got wind that Peter, Jesus' top disciple, was hiding out in Damascus. So while Paul was traveling on the road to Damascus, according to Paul, Jesus appeared before him. This is after Jesus died and ascended to heaven. Jesus appeared before him and told Paul, Why do you persecute me? Paul immediately fell to his knees, started crying, felt remorse for what he had been doing to the Christian. He had a complete change of heart. Paul uses the well-established Roman roads to travel across the empire, preaching the Christian faith, writing letters. These letters basically to this day make up one-third of the New Testament. So that is why Paul is kind of a big deal. He wrote one-third of the New Testament. So the Christian faith spread and spread and spread until the early 300s it got to the point where they're starting to become more Christian believers than the believers of the old Roman faith. Those that believed in the gods Jupiter and Mars and Mercury and Venus and there is a Roman emperor by the name of Constantine that was fighting a civil war against his stepbrother over control of the empire. The stepbrother's name was Maxentius 
and there was a very important battle. Constantine was outnumbered by Maxentius. He had less troops. Maxentius had the higher ground, and it looked like Constantine was going to lose, but according to Constantine, he suddenly saw a sign from the Christian God in the sky, a cross. And then he heard God's voice booming down to him, saying, In this sign, ye shall come. So Constantine then orders all his troops to paint the Christian cross on their shields, and they all march into battle with the cross, and Constantine wins. And after this battle, Constantine's so overwhelmed by what had just happened, he is baptized a Christian. So here we have the Roman emperor himself becoming a Christian, and this is the tipping point. From here on out, Rome will be a Christian empire. By 313, Constantine passes the Edict of Milan. Edict means declaration. Milan is where it was written. The Edict of Milan basically declared that Christians shall no longer be persecuted. Now that Rome is a Christian empire, that's where we're gonna leave you. Next video lesson, we're gonna learn about the fall of the Western Roman Empire. That should be fun. I'll see you then.